Hey everyone, thanks so much for stopping by. My name is Brandon Schaefer, and tonight, we got a crowded room tonight, and there's gonna be some other people joining us as well. Every Wednesday night, eight o'clock, my name's Brandon Schaefer. We see Brian Quinn on here. Both of us meet up, eight o'clock Eastern, seven o'clock Central, every Wednesday, eight o'clock. Tonight, we have some guests on. We have Austin Haynes of emergencylifecoach.com. He personally helps me out a ton with personal development speeches and stuff like that. We have Tony on the line, and she may participate as well. And uh, we're going to get started. So what we did last week was we went over um, the resume writing. All right. So t tonight we're going to go over interviews. And Brian has a plethora of experience on this topic. Uh, so... Brian, do you want to give a quick introduction and then let, let Austin give a quick introduction and then Tony, if you want to jump in, give a quick introduction and then we can get in the bread and butter. So go ahead, Brian. Sure. Thanks. Um, uh, like I said, my name is Brian Quinn. Um, he, uh, he honors me. Um, a plethora is, is a lot. And um, I've got 30 years in the Navy. Uh, you don't do a ton of interviews in the Navy, but you are constantly interviewing and talking to people because people are moving. Uh, you get new people, you get people moving in and out. Um, I've been in corporate America for the past uh, five years, and I'm in a position right now of hiring manager. So uh, I just, I saw a need for this type of thing. So I talked to Brandon, see if he wanted to share it. He said, yes. So we're going to do that. Thank you. Nice. Austin, you want to shoot? Absolutely. Brandon, first of all, thank you, Brandon. Brian, I really appreciate this. I honor this time to be able to spend just a couple minutes to share I'm passionate about, you know, helping people, especially in this, this market right now that we're in. Brandon, as you know, I spent a long time in corporate America. I spent five years as a, as a manager and we did, we did a lot of interviews. So I, I got the, I had the opportunity to, to sit across and be the one trying to get the job. And I, I joke around I say, you know, when they were shutting the door, I stuck my foot in the door to, to like, to get the job. And then uh, fortunately became a manager and did a lot of the interviewing and, and participated in that process. And it's, a, it's an education, not only uh, trying to being in the interview, but even from the other side of the table, you're, you're learning. So I had that perspective and I'm excited to bring that perspective tonight to the respective audience, especially now because, and, and I wanna be clear, like I can bring in what I learned, but I, I think that it's, it's relevant uh, even as for us to be open because we're in a different market right now. So even as we're talking about the things that we know, I think it's important that we create as we go because we, we want to tap into what people are really going through right now. It's, it's a whole different thing right now. Everything's moving and, and we got to be better. Like we have to be better. We have to be better as leaders and the people that, that are listening to this, it, it's all of us need to up our game. So I'm excited to share, share tonight. Cool, man. It's, it's great to have you on as well. And uh, you know, it's, I, Everything that you just said and everything that Brian said is, is, is so true. I say the same thing over and over and over again. It's like music to my ears, you know? When you surround yourself and when you commit and when you get around shakers and movers, when you get around people with positive momentum going in the right direction, it, it builds, right? It builds. So what, what, what Brian and I did was just commit. Like, and we started this, what, six weeks ago or something, Brian? Eight weeks something ago? Like yeah. And, and every week, you know, before we started this, we, we were laughing because I changed my backgrounds. I've, I've got a new mic. I've, I've got a new camera. I got the glow, the, 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 the glow light. <laughs> and why I'm saying this is you put the effort in before it's actually needed. Or, or as you learn, you put the effort in, right? So it's a constant preparation. And that segues right into what we're going to talk about tonight. And that is the interview. So, Brad, do you have your points up where you want to go over kind of with the first ones or you you want me to go through them? So, yeah, I mean, I've got them in front of me. Um, yeah. Uh, all I ask is you keep me on task because, you know, I'm going to go down a rabbit hole and I'm going to talk until 10 o'clock tonight if you let me. So we'll just stay on task there. No worries. Um, and, and, and by all means, Austin, I know that you've, you said you've been in the game. You've been on both sides of the table. So I welcome absolutely anything you have to say. And then uh, Tony and Susie please feel free to speak up and ask any questions. If there's something that you don't understand, um, you want us to repeat it, by all means, that's what we're here for. I don't care if we only get through one point tonight, as long as you guys get something out of it, then I'm a happy person. Love it. Um, 
So, you know, just the, the crux of the whole first part of it is um, number one, show up early. And so uh, to Austin's point, we are in a different world right now. There's, there's a lot of interviews that when I say show up early, a lot of people are going to think, hey, that means physically show up. Um, as you well know, many, many people, many interviews are happening now over the phone or Zoom or whatever. Um, back in the day, the, the phone interview used to be a screening to screen you out. Uh, nowadays, it's a, this is how we do it. Um, so show up early. If it's, a, if it's a Zoom call or something like that, you need to make sure that you're on um, definitely in time. Dress to impress. Um, I've had people come in. I mean, I'm just wearing a regular old T-shirt and a pair of shorts right now. Um, corporate America, I've had people come in in T-shirts and, you know, the, the hat ring around their head because they just took off their hat in the truck or out in the lobby on the way in or something. Um, I'm like, you understand that you're interviewing for this position and you know, some people just don't get it. Um, and then to that point there, so uh, my daughter just got a job and she had a phone interview and I asked her what her preparation was before it. She took a shower, she got dressed, she made herself comfortable. Um, and I'm like, would you take a shower? I mean, it was like eight o'clock in the morning. I'm like, what are you taking a shower for? She's like, because it makes me feel better. I have to feel better. Um, there's another guy on my team who had a, a phone interview and he went all the way and put on a suit to be prepared for that because he felt professional. He felt like he was in that zone. Um, so just, you know, you don't have to wear bunny slippers and a moo uh, just because you're sitting behind a desk or, or something like that, right? So uh, dress to impress. Um, the next point I have is be confident. You know, even if uh, it, it's easy enough to see nervousness and lack of confidence, um, I think that there's plenty of, of tells and things out there that we can get just from the inflection of somebody's voice. So even over the phone, we can tell if you're uncomfortable. We can tell if you're nervous. We can tell if you are um, not confident. Um, and then one of the most difficult things um, over the phone is you have to be, I, I highly suggest you sit down with a blank piece of paper and a pen and don't be afraid to ask the interviewer to repeat the question. Um, I, the last series of interviews I did were all over the phone. Not one person asked me to repeat the question or anybody on my team. I'm not the only person asking questions. Um, and it was amazing how many people either missed the point, talked around the point, never gave direct answers. Um, so uh, thoughts on those things. So the showing up early, right? So Brian's been in the Navy for 30 years. Like the first couple times when we did this, it was like two minutes to eight. I'm on the East Coast, Brian's in Central. It's like two minutes and I'm, I'm rushing, I'm getting on and stuff like that, right? I'm ill prepared. I know, and this is why it's so fantastic to, to work with somebody is that, is that they push you to do better. And I know Austin's gonna talk about this as well. Everybody needs a running mate. You need to be around a group that's gonna push you to do better, that's gonna, that's gonna show you the better way. And Brian always pushes me, like if, if I come on at 10 till, it's 10 till, like five minutes early is on time for me, or 10 minutes early is on time for me. You know, that, that's, so, so I have plenty of time. I get there early to, not that I go on a lot of interviews or anything else, but when I did, I always arrived early because there's always going to be traffic, there's always going to be a flat tire. There's always going to be something that comes up. You must account for that because being late for the first interview is just, is just not bad. And if, if at all, by any chance that you have to be late for some absurd reason or unforeseen reason, find out and, and contact them immediately before, as soon as the second you know, and I know Brian and I talked about this before, the second you know something is going to happen, like immediately reach out and say, hey, listen, I'm, 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 I, I left two hours early. There's an overturned truck on, on the highway. I, I don't know what to do. I don't want to speed. I don't know where I'm going. Can we push it back? You know, immediately. But don't wait until five to nine and the, and the thing starts at nine to reach out, you know, as soon as it happens. So, Austin, what are your thoughts, man? 
I think you're spot on. I think that the surest way to be late is to think you have plenty of time. <laughs> I catch myself. I got plenty of time. And, and the next thing you know, you ain't got plenty of time. <laughs> so I, I think that, and, and there's, you know, some people that I worked with that they, they it's, it's just a mindset. It, it's, we're talking about being on time, but it's, it's a part of a, a collective mindset. It's, it's your mode of operation. And I, I'm, and I'm not on here telling everyone that I'm, that I'm perfect because I push the envelope just like everyone else. We, we stack ourselves up and we do a lot and we try to, and I'm, I'll do a lot. But when we do that, we really need to, to lock in that, that jump off point where it's time. And, and even tonight, I knew I needed to be getting in, dialed into the Zoom call a half hour before. So, you know, so I'm not trying to dial in, you know, I actually dialed in here 15 minutes early. But I just wanted to check and see. It was no big deal. I came off and then I went back in. But I, I, I'm, I'm getting myself mentally ready. And that's the other thing it does when you're early. You, you're, you're giving yourself time to breathe. You're, 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 whether it's a Zoom call, you're in the lobby, wherever. Now you can breathe and you can just allow yourself to relax. So you're not coming in with a full head of steam and, and you know, you're, you're, because you're excited as it is anyway. So give yourself time. Like, like relax, dial in, you know. To, look around brand you know this brand we look around like find out what's going on if even if it's a zoom call look at the background yeah. <laughs> um if you're in a lobby look around learn make mental notes all those things are, are really important it's like sen uh, sensory acuity kind of pay attention to what's going on so i think it's it's important to, to remind ourselves and and there's people that i'm around that are way better than i am at this and i like i measure myself against them and that's what you were saying. Like, get a coach, get a mentor, have somebody that is going to hold you accountable. We all need that. I need it. You, we all need it. Everyone needs it. So, Tony, what do you think about the? What, what, what do you think about showing up early, leaving yourself enough time, stuff like that? Oh uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm I'm usually an hour early. <laughs> an I hour? Have, wow. Okay. Yeah. If I, have, if I have an interview, or even when I like, people used to make fun of me because when I first started my job, I would show up an hour early. Um, and some of the things I would just say is just always um, make sure you, you breathe, you speak slowly, keep your shoulders back, good posture, always makes you look more confident. And one of the things that I um, notice a lot where I am, I, a lot of times I schedule interviews for the managers and I will specifically mention the manager's name three times. You're gonna be interviewing with Eric at three o'clock when you come in, just make sure you ask for Eric. And then they come in and I said, well, and I know who they're interviewing with because I set up the interviews and I'll say, well, who is your interview with? Oh, I don't know. They didn't tell me their name, you know? So always know who you're interviewing with. It looks really bad when you don't. Wow. Brian, you left that one off, man. You left that one off the list, Brian. What's the matter with you? <laughs> you're so, slacking, Brian. You're done. I'm giving you a C. I was giving so, you an A. See, even with a plethora of interviews, you can't have it all, right? <laughs> um, so, Tony, is that a specific age group or is that irrespective um, of age? Uh, I would say where I work, it's, it's a lot of more on the younger side. And <clears throat> they usually come in in, in sweatpants and, you know, T-shirts. It's, it's very unusual to see. Once in a while, you'll get them where they'll come in, they'll look professional, they'll know who they're interviewing with. They think because it's a, a casual type place that that's okay to come in an interview like that. And as soon as I see them right off the bat, I text the manager and tell the manager, like, uh, you know, my opinion on it already before they even meet with the manager. So they already kind of have a heads up on what they're walking into. They bring friends. They show up with friends to the interview. You know? <laughs> it's just <laughs> very, very unusual. <laughs> Have, have you ever caught anybody smoking out in the lobby before the meeting? Just, just to lower the nerves a little bit, you know? Um, I, well, I haven't only because our lobby is, we actually are on the third floor. Oh, okay. So I, ha I mean, but I have had people come in and I'm very sensitive to the smell of smoke, so I can smell it on them. I gotcha. So as- uh, And not just cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. There you go. There. Well, that's a concern too. I mean, that's a kid. Don't show up to the meeting like you've uh, like 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 you've been on your car the whole time. You know, smoking before you be before you get in there. You know, I mean, look, just... I, I missed another one. 
<laughs> Don't show up, Stone. I'm sorry. That was not on my checklist. C minus. C oh, my goodness. Brandon, I got a story about, about the dress because um, – Yeah, hit it. I, now, just to keep it real, like one of my earlier my, – my first opportunity, I, I was really excited. Long story short, I, I didn't have access to my, my full wardrobe, so I, I put on the best thing I had. I showed up, and I got into the interview – and the guy said to me, he looked me in the eye and he said, you know, you're lucky. He said, normally I wouldn't even see you because of the way you were dressed. He said, but I, I've been doing this for a while. I had a gut instinct. Be back here tomorrow in a suit. So, like, you can get lucky, but that, that's a rare situation. You don't, you don't want to take that chance. You don't want to ever take that chance. And so, it, again, this may seem basic one-on-one stuff. And today the dress code's all over the place. But I think it's, like, dress appropriate to, to where you're going, look polished. If you got a t-shirt on, make sure it's the cleanest, best t-shirt you have, you know? Make sure you're, you present well, whatever it is, so. Well, you're right, there's exceptions to every single rule. You know, people, yeah. people that have watched the movie um, Pursuit of Happiness are gonna be like, that dude showed up, he didn't even have a shirt on the first day. You know, and he's walking into Wall Street, Bears and Stern or whatever, right? I absolutely, the exception, not the rule. He was, part of it was his absolute frank um, honesty uh, I would have had time to go home and take a shower, but I was in jail. So I was either come here or, you know, um, and, and that's not Hollywood. That's a true event that happened in that gentleman's life. Um, not recommended. Yeah. <laughs> so, so when it comes to dress to impress, if, if they're casual, and this is a question for everybody here, but if they're casual, do you suit up? What do you, what do you do? Because like if you don't know the dress code, if you because most people are in Dockers now in a in a in, in a polo or something else like that. But if that's their dress code, do you suit up? And what's the tie? What what's your thoughts on this, Brian? With the tie and then Austin and 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 everybody else, like what and and the Tony, what's it? What's your thought on the tie anymore? Is that just like overdoing it? You think now or or no, what, I Brian? Don't. Why don't you go first? So I'm in the aerospace industry, right? So uh, who are your top three? Um, uh, Boeing, Lockheed, Martin, um, Northrop Grumman, BAE, any of those places. If I'm going any to Fortune 500 company, 100, Fortune 50, I'm wearing a suit and tie, period. I mean, that's all there is to it. Um, I, I can't imagine not doing that. I really can't. I have a very hard time not imagining not doing that. Yeah. Um, Are you a suit and tie guy now, though, Brian? No, no. Um, okay. I'm business casual, right? But do you expect um, people when they come in to interview to be in a suit and tie? In yes, your, I do. In your, in your yes, position? I do. Yeah. Okay. Um, if they really knock it out of the park, I'm not going to ding them on it. But during my feedback, I will mention it to them. Wow. Okay. What, what, what about sleeve length? If the sleeve is hanging down too far, you know? Oh, you got a jacket on, the sleeve length doesn't matter. I like that. Okay. All right. No, I know some people buy the shirts. They're way too big. They're too small, whatever. But, you know, who knows? Austin, what are your thoughts? I don't think you're ever going to get thrown out for wearing a suit and tie. And wow. You're, okay. And you're never okay. going to get somebody say, oh, that guy had a suit and tie. Can you believe this guy? Like, no one's ever going to say that. And I don't know. If you go back, Brandon, dress one level above who you're dealing with, if you can. Or at least – similar positions no one is if you're and if you're a lady you're, you're going to dress up you, you, women have a little more flexibility I think because they have more options than, than men typically and I think I'm correct in saying that so women can do a lot of things to, to come in professionally whether they want to wear pants I mean a lot of women are wearing, wearing pants today or whatever but women have a lot of options to come in and dress professional and look dressed to the nines and as far as a man, I know I got, I got critiqued because I had a, a one point years ago that a double breasted suit on and I had someone tell me it wasn't buttoned. So people are watching. And I, I think that in an interview and you're trying to get a job, you're putting your best foot forward. I think you go with the suit and tie and, and let them tell you to take it off or do something different. And, and wow. here's the, I mean, any astute individual, they're going to research the company a little bit. I would like to think. Um, and all you got to do is ask. Tony calls me up and says, Brian, meet with Eric at nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Tony, uh, is there a dress code? 
Do you prefer a suit and tie? Do you prefer business casual? Board shorts and a tank top. Please, you know, ask the question. Yeah, that's a, that's a phenomenal idea, man. That's a, that's a really good thing, especially if you're speaking with an interviewing manager or somebody else like that setting up. Don't be afraid to ask questions like, hey, what, what can I wear? Is there a place to park? Where, where's the best place to park? Um, how do I get into the building? You know, because that shows some initiative, some, some pre-planning. And like Tony was saying is when, when you walk in and you're in sweatpants or something else, it can kind of be like, well, what the heck? But if, if they had asked questions the day before, you're kind of, I just speak for myself, but if someone asks me questions the day before, I know they're excited to come. It kind of like sets the stage. It's like going out on a date. Not that I've been on a date for a long time because I'm happily married with three kids. So no one get any ideas out there. But when I was dating a long, long time ago, um, you know, I would put in a pre-call. You know, I would put in, pre hey, let's, we're, we're, we're going to go here. Like, this is, this is the type of place it is, so forth. Um, so don't be afraid to ask questions. Tony, what are your thoughts on it? Um, I mean, wearing, like, wearing a tuxedo, I don't think you can ever really be <laughs> like too overdressed for an interview. I mean, I think just look the best you possibly can look. I mean, some people I understand are maybe in a situation where they don't have, you know, a nice suit, but they can still look nice. Um, you know, maybe a nice polo shirt or a button down, some dress pants. I mean, you could go to Goodwill and buy something nice. It doesn't have yeah. to be, you know, from any type of expensive store. I mean, I've, I've actually been in situations where I've said to my friends, I need clothes for an interview. Let's hit the thrift store. And I've bought some really nice stuff there. So, you know, they're not going to know. Uh, that's, that's good. What about, and I, be, before we get into the confident part, what about smells? Um, perfumes, cologne, too much, too little. Like, what's, what's, what's the deal? Earrings for girl, you know, um, piercings for guys, tattoos for guys, like, what, what's there, which, what are your thoughts, Brian, without, you know, going too far into the weeds and then let's go down the line and just see what you, you, what do you do? Um, wow. So, you know, when you're, when you're 53 years old and uh, you grew up in a time when um, girls had earrings and, and boys had tattoos, um, today both my daughters have way more tattoos than I have. Um, there are people at work in our, in our industry that have, you know, the stretched out years and things like that. Um, I would like to think that I am not so closed minded that I don't accept that as today's culture, right? Um, tastefully done, right? Um, perfumes, colognes, nothing overpowering. You know, it's put on after a shower, not as your shower kind of thing. So, um, make sure that that's everything in moderation. Yeah. What about you, Austin? I, I think it's, it's appropriate to, depending on what the, what the industry is, I, I think that you, you need to look past that and you need to, you're, cause you're, you're evaluating the person and their ability to fulfill a job requirement. And I, I think today you, you, we need to look past that. If there's any, you as an interviewer, you have any preconceived notions, we need to look at the person. Is it a factor? It can be a factor, just like anything else can be a factor, just like smoking in the lobby can be a factor. It's a factor, but I don't think it's something that we, like for example, in my case, my, I'm a perfect example, I didn't have any tattoos, but I wasn't dressed appropriately. That guy could have said, hey, don't, don't even bother coming in here, but he didn't. So I think it's, it's a similar thing uh, with, with, the, uh, with the tattoos or the, or the piercings. It's, it's a part of culture today. It's a, sto it's, a, it's a fashion statement. And if you're getting a job in the music industry or something like that, you, you know, having the ear, the ear things, nobody's going to look twice. It, it just depends on where you're going for the job. Oh, and, and I, a couple of things. My belief on scent, though, I, I think my opinion, take it for what it's worth, I think you're better with no cologne. I think, I don't think anybody needs to smell anything. They shouldn't smell, in my opinion, because people smell is a very personal thing and the interview may not like the smell. And, and that goes, um, and, and the other thing, and I, Brandon, I would, I, if I said this to you before, but uh, being in sales, like bad breath will lose a deal for you. So we, that was my mantra. Bad breath will lose me a deal if I'm not careful. So I think, if you need to put a mint in your mouth so you don't have bad breath, that's the only smell that I would, that I would want to convey, if, if anything. 
I just want to dovetail on that just a little bit is um, you don't know what size the, the interview, if you're going in person, you don't know what size the room is, the office, the conference room, whatever. You don't know how large it is, right? Um, we, do, we do them in our small conference rooms. Um, there's barely enough room for four people to sit around that thing. So even the slightest bit might be overpowering. Wow. Tony, what are your thoughts? Um, I mean, I have to agree with the scent thing. I would um, definitely hold back on that. You want to be showered, smell good, but not necessarily have any type of over, overwhelming type of perfume or cologne or anything like that. Um, fresh breath, obviously, definite, definite, definite. I agree with Austin on that. Um, as far as the tattoos, piercings, all that type of stuff, I mean, our, my rule of thumb is, you know, no earrings bigger than a, than a dime. You just want to keep them very, like, you know, dainty and nice. Um, but I understand that the trends these days, they do have a lot of tattoos. They do have a lot of piercings and gauges and all different things like that. Um, I think it just depends on the industry and you have to know as, as if you're interviewing, if you're walking into that, that you could be rejected for that. I mean, I know my friend works at a casino and if a girl isn't, doesn't have a particular weight, like they actually weigh them every week. If they don't fit in their uniform, they don't work. So there are companies out there that still do that type of stuff and you just have to be aware of who you're working for. I mean, we have people that come in and interview for us and they don't even understand what we do, you know? And, wow. and they come in and think they're just gonna come in and play games all day. And we're like, no, that's not how it works. <laughs> you know, you actually have to work. <laughs> so. Do your research. That's, that's your what research. we talked about a few weeks ago too, is, is do your research. So I know Austin needs to jump pre soon. Um, so let's go over this next one real quick. If you can hang on for a few more minutes, Tony, Austin, Susie. Sure. And then, and then we'll get down to the bread and butter, Bri, in, in a few minutes. But um, confidence, because I know Austin, being a life coach, business coach, you know, stuff like that. So he, he's going to speak in depth in this, I'm sure. But um, do you want to go first on this one, Austin? Sure. I, I think you guys covered re research. I'm sure you, you did that very well. So for me to talk about confidence in a silo would, would be a disservice, right? So when you guys covered research – that's where you're building your confidence so that when you show up, you're ready to go. And I'm going to use an example here. And this, this will, you, I'm sure you're going to talk about this, Brandon, but you, you know, when you go through the star, the star component, but Tom Brady, Tom Brady, he's playing football well into his forties. His preparation is off the charts, right? He, he spends 16 hours a day before game day, every day, leading up to a game, 16 hours a day. And I know personally, he has somebody working his body over before, after, constantly, constantly, like love the preparation. And you, and you went over that so eloquently. But what, the reason why I'm bringing that up again to reference it so that when he shows up on Sunday, how's his confidence? If he spent 60, and you're, no one's going to spend 16 hours a day preparing for one interview, but whatever is appropriate for you so that when you walk in the door, your confidence is through the roof because you've done the work so that when you show up, you're ready to go. You're certain that you, you're building up your level of certainty is really what we're talking about. So yes, you can pump yourself up. I, I believe in that. Like we, you know, you want to pump up your physiology, but, and do that even if you haven't done the work, because sometimes that helps, but do the work in advance so that when you show up and I just, a couple notes, your, your energy, your energy in the interview is, is so important. And it's finding that pacing in the interview. Oh, you know, if you're really excited and the person's not really, they might, you might overwhelm them. So you want to be energetic, but not over the top. And then one thing that, that I do is I visualize the outcome before I walk in the door or while I'm prepping for the interview. I want to visualize the outcome. I want to visualize like this is going to go great. I'm, something's going to come from this. You visualize that. You nail it in your brain. So when you go in there, it, all that's affecting your energy level and your confidence. And, and that's a way to differentiate yourself. Um, and I can't think of his name. Is it um, Paul, Paul Meyer, Paul Meyer. He's a very, was a very successful business guy. And, and, and what he, he called himself an invert paranoid. So what he did was instead of coming in the door, paranoid, what could go wrong? He would imagine like, they're waiting for me. I'm here. Like I'm the person you want to hire. 
So he's walking in with that attitude before he even shows up. You're instantly going to have a different energy about you. You're instantly going to have an impact. Even if you don't get the job, they may say, you know what? Based on that interview, you would be great over here, or they might recommend you to someone else, or it'll lead somewhere. And I think that's the attitude you got to have when you walk in the door. That's or awesome. you get on a Zoom call or, or whatever the uh, particular modality that you or the venue that you're using. Yeah, practice. Look, look at yourself in the mirror and practice. Before you drop off, Tony, what, what are your thoughts on, on the confidence piece? What, what do you like to see? What do you don't like to see? Um, I mean, I, I like to see good posture because I think that reflects confidence. Uh, again, someone that speaks slowly, <laughs> that, that actually thinks about the questions, that has questions um, to show that they're interested, that knows about the company. Uh, and then, um, you know, one of the things Mel Robbins always says is that, um, you know, fear and excitement have the same results in your body. So instead of going in there and saying, I'm nervous, I'm nervous, I'm nervous, you say, I'm excited, I'm excited, I'm excited. And that actually can kind of portray more confidence for you. Beautiful. Brian, what about you? Um, you know, they both, I think they hit the nail right on the head. Um, the confidence has to be real. It has to be true. You can't fabricate that. Um, that comes in your preparation. That comes in, in the... Um, uh, in the research, it comes in all those things. So um, I know a lot of people out there try to say, you know, fake it till you make it. I don't ever prescribe to that. <clears throat> I think it's absolute garbage. I think the person on the other side of the table is going to be able to see right through that. Um, and all you do is diminish your chances. Yeah. So I heard one thing today and then Austin, I'll let you guys jump. Thank you so much for coming on too. I really appreciate it. Come back next week too. Let's, we're, 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 and we're, this yeah. is some great conversation, but the, the one thing I want to share before you go is I heard today that if you breathe in like really, really big and you exhale, like you're pushing through a straw, like breathe in, exhale as if you're pushing that air out through a straw six times, Austin shaking his head because he, he's, he's, he's probably heard of this a thousand times. Yeah. It, it resets your whole mindset. Like it is yeah. so it resets your whole mindset. And then the, the, the last piece was you talked about the catastrophic thinking, like, Oh my goodness, something's going to go wrong. And I haven't found this word in the dictionary, but I have heard it before. It's called anastrophic thinking. And that is thinking that the positive is going to occur. And that's, that's, that's how I think I'm an anastrophic thinker. Like my wife's like, we're going to be late. I'm like, we're going to be on time. We're, you know, this is constant, this is constant battle, you know, with, with, with positive, negative, positive, negative. And, um, but, it, but it's funny how it all works out. So, so Brian, before we get into the rest, let's let these guys roll. And, um, Tony, please come back. Susie, come back next week or, or we can get on your show, Austin, if you want. Yeah. Uh, and, and do that. Bri Bri we're yeah. great resources. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna connect you with Brian as well. You two can talk, and um, and we'll go from there. Cool. I'll make sure everyone's connected. There's some great synergies here. We we brought up some real deep points, and um, and that's it. So thank yeah, you. Can for we catch on, the uh, Brandon? I want to make sure we can catch this YouTube as well, right? This is gonna be on YouTube. Yes, yes, yeah. Okay. I'll get it shared out for you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much, Brian. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon, Tony. Thank, thank, thank you so Susie. much for doing this, and we'll share this as well. For Pleasure sure, man. You. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Bye, guys. Bye. All right, bye. All right, Brian. So, if you want to get into um, the star situation, task, action, result, let's um, let's let's take a deep dive in there. Okay. So that really comes from you know up at the top where I said be sure to answer the question. Um, depending on the level of person that I'm interviewing, um, I don't necessarily require this if it is a a mid to upper upper level person that i'm interviewing i ask them if they are familiar with the star um if they tell me no i explain it to them and i tell them i expect to be answered i expect your answers to be in this format um i've never even heard of star I've never, I've never heard of star before. I, I know Austin picked up on it right away. He's like, Brian's going to talk about the star method. Uh, I, I've, am, am, am I living in the stone ages or is this something? 
that's new as old. Has this been around forever or, or what? Yeah, am I, I, it's been around as long as I've been doing them. Okay. Um, and, and so star situation, the situation was we had, and I'm just going to use a quick one off of mine for my Navy days. Right. Um, so the sit and I, so in, in an interview, um, I may actually say the situation was this, the task was this. So I had to take this action, which resulted in, I'll actually use the words, right? Um, those are, and, and whether the company is aware of the star method or not, it helps them keep track of my story. It helps me keep track of my story. I tell my story and I shut up. Wow. So I will say the situation was we had two aircraft in two different squadrons that had uh, two motors on each. It was a C9 or a DC-10 um, uh, C9 and one motor on each aircraft had very few hours left on it before it had to go to the rework and two engines had a lot of hours. Um, one aircraft was scheduled to go to the, the boneyard because it was being scrapped and the other one was going to continue service for another five years. Um, so the task I took was to get the two aircraft together um, in the same hangar, take the low time engine off of this one and the uh, high time engine off of this one and swap them out. So the action was to get one aircraft with two low time motors on it that are going to the boneyard. So you don't ever have to do the rehaul on either one of those motors. And the other aircraft has two um, low hour engines so they can fly for the next three years without having to go to rehaul. The result was um, I saved $1.6 million in rehaul costs. I increased fleet availability over the next three years of that one aircraft because we didn't have to take the aircraft down to take off the motor to send it in for rehaul. And I got 13 technicians trained in removing and replacing of a um, engine on an airframe. Wow. Done. And then you shut up. Right? That's powerful. Where have I, where, where, where have you been my whole life? Where, had I only interviewed, had I only used those steps during an interview? <laughs> you know, life, life, life takes you where it takes you though. You know, yes. and that's, that's why you have to show up, you know, and I know, I know we're not plugging this show and everything else at this moment in time, right, right now, but that's why you show up in every conversation that we have, there is going to be some gems that come out. There's going to be some, you're going to hit the pay dirt, but it's, it's just like the interview. If you don't show up on time, if you don't show up consistently, if you don't put the research in and, 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 and you don't open your ears and listen, you know, you just like, like myself, you know, I had never heard of the star method before. Now I do. So if you're watching this, use that. I mean, listen, when I was just listening to you, Brian, that's like, like I'm buying what you're selling. Right. And, and like, like you talked about last week, the interview, we, we, we talked about the resume writing, right. And that's the, the, the resume writing and the interview go hand in hand. And it's all about selling yourself, right? You're using that, that, that you're using your resume to get your foot in the door, put your crack, put, put your foot as a crack in the door there. We're writing for the systems by working with professional, i.e. Brian, you know, um, now, now you're learning about the actual interview, showing up early, being confident, dressing to impress, you know, all those types of things. So can we go on to the college, the inexperience, the, the, I, I guess we, what we want to talk about here is more of the, um, and I know we talked about this last week too, which was, Hey, you probably have experience, but you haven't related what you've done to, to the experience as being asked for on the resume. So can you go into that a little bit, Brian? Absolutely. So um, a lot of the, my recent interviews have been with college kids, college, um, college graduates. And 
we'll ask anywhere from five to eight questions per interview. Um, I try to, uh, when I'm doing the introduction, I try to let them know that I am well aware that you have just graduated from XYZ University, or you will be graduating in the next few weeks. Um, I am fully aware that you have zero experience in my industry other than maybe your internships that you've done in between. Mm. I'm gonna ask you a series of questions. I don't care if it's aerospace related. I don't care if it's, I want you to answer the question given the best example you have. It could be from a capstone project that you did in your aeronautic, aeronautical engineer class. It could be, um, you were the captain of cross country team in high school or whatever. It could be the weekend you spent building a tree house with your dad when you were nine years old in a lesson that you learned there that you can relate to the question that I'm asking. I don't care. I'm asking you a question. Give me a satisfactory answer. I'm going to teach you. I'm, I'm bringing you in as an entry level person. My team and I are going to teach you how to deal with the systems that we have to deal with. I need to know that you have the aptitude to deal with it. I need to know that I can ask you a question, you can comprehend it, and you can give me a, an answer that, that meets the criteria of the question. And I'll let it go at that. Um, and that was actually probably a little bit more long-winded than what I would normally say. Um, However, but I, so, and that kind of puts them at ease. You can see some of the tension leaving them because they're like, oh, well, you know, I was in cheerleading. I was on the football team. I was, I was in debate. I was, I played the piano. I, you know, I don't, you don't have relevant work experience, but you have 20 years of life experience. Wow. Yeah. And that leads back to what Austin was saying with the energy. Like you can see that some people come in and they just have a certain, and even to, Tony was saying it with the posture, you know, like you see people that come in and they're just, you know, the, the, the shoulders are back, they're standing up straight, they're, they're ready. When we used to shake hands, you could, you, that was a great sign. Like, Hey, nice, nice, good handshake and, and, um, and sit down. You know, how, what, who sits down first? Do they ask where to sit? Where do you usually sit? Do you, do you want me to sit on this side? Where's the best position for me? You know, because people are, are methodical a lot of times. Like, do you sit in the same chair every, every time you interview and someone sits in your chair, you feel off or no? You sit wherever. <laughs> no, I sit wherever because we're in different rooms, different offices. Right, different okay. Things. All right. I, I know there's some people that, that you know, they, they walk right in, they sit at the head of the table because they think that, that's where they're supposed to sit. In, in, in reality, you know, I always walk in and just kind of like stall a little bit. Not, and I'm not going out on interviews and stuff like that, but I'm, j I'm just talking about in business meetings. I usually walk in the door, they'll open up the door for me or I'll open up the door for them in, into the meeting room. I'll stall a little bit and then, and then I'll ask like, if they don't sit down first, I ask where, where's the best position for me to sit? Or where, where's, where, where are you most comfortable with, with me sitting? Because as the person on the other side, I want to make sure that the person that's going to be asking me questions is as comfortable as ever. I want them to be in their most comfortable effort. So my whole task in going on the interview is to make, is, is to make the experience pleasurable. Um, and, and I'm talking more on a sales call here, not, not so much on an interview call, but the same, the same theory holds true on an, on, on, I guess on, on, on an interview that you were going on as well. You know, if you just come in and, and there's, and, and there's, there's some food on the side for, for, for a meeting at 12 o'clock or 1215 and you go over and grab a sandwich and, and sit down in a, in a water. And the person's like, that's for our, tw that's for our next meeting. You know, it's, it's 1130. That's already, that's not, that's not for you. You know, I'm sorry. I'll put it back here. Yeah. It creates, it creates an, it creates an odd situation. So Brian, here's my, here's my other question is, um, internships. How important are internships when somebody comes in to interview just based off of your experience? If someone is, was in college and put forth the effort and did like uh, an internship over summer 
um, versus somebody that didn't. And the person that didn't obviously had higher accolade, may, maybe bet better grades, something along those lines. How do you measure them? I don't. I don't. Um, if I look at it, I just chalk it up to experience. And I, when I'm asking them questions, I'll expect them to say something about their summer internship at Frito-Lay, at Boeing, wherever they're at, right? I expect yep. a story um, to come from one of those, the, the, the summer project they had at X Corporation. Um, I understand uh, not a lot of people can afford to go and do internships. They're not paid. Um, a lot of students are trying to put themselves through school. So they go back home and they work at the pizza place or the grocery store or dad's law firm or whatever. So they may not have an opportunity to do that. Um, so I don't discredit it. That's, that's good to know because I know there's a, lot of, there's a lot of focus on the internships, but do the internships, just, just from your experience, do you think they give you an advantage on the resume, writing for the algorithm on, on the resume to, to, get, to at least get the interview? No. So, so we'll say if it's a uh, mechanical engineering or electrical engineering position, right? Um, aerospace electrical engineering is totally different than everybody has electrical engineering. You know, the, the Coca-Cola bottling plant down the street needs an electrical engineer to run their, all their conveyor belts. What does that have to do with a, um, a B-52 bomber on the, the flight line? Nothing other than it's, uh, it's um, uh, positive and negative and ACDC. I mean, the, the basic theory of electronics is the same. But I, like I said, I expect to hear about how he fixed, uh, you know, worked long hours, came in and fixed, came up with a solution for this switch or whatever. Um, does it benefit them? I think it helps them grow just because it's an opportunity. If, if you don't have opportunities, you don't grow. If you don't take advantage of, right? So that's really where I stand on, on internships. I mean, and, and again, this is just me. Mm -hmm. I grew up very, very poor. I, uh, I joined the service because I couldn't afford to go to college. Um, I wasn't going to stay in the same small dead end town I grew up in. Um, I ended up uh, being very successful in the military. I ended up getting my bachelor's, then my master's later on. But I have a totally different outlook than one of my colleagues who um, grew up, whether affluent or not, went to college right away, got an engineering degree. Um, I, where I spent 30 years in the military, he has now spent or she has now spent 30 years in this company or in this industry. So they might hold that internship a lot more dear um, when they're looking at it than I would. Wow. And, you know, for anybody watching this, just get vulnerable in your interview. This is, that's, that's what I say. Like the, the thing that Brian just said there, and it was so natural because he because he's he's an experienced person, obviously, but and he's been through a lot. But if you can just break, and this is this is the next topic we're going to get into this. But just just as a segue, like that story, you know that if you don't think growing if if you don't think growing up in a small town without a lot of money. And then going into a mili go, go, going into the military, you know, doing amazing things, staying in there a long time. Like that is the story. Everybody loves a story like that. So that's the next topic is, is have these, know who you are. Like I even get goosebumps, you know, I get goosebumps every time we talk at, at least once or twice during this, but like, have your story and own your story in the interview. Your story may not be perfect. It may not be the story that the person who's interviewing is. But if you can just get vulnerable and just share a real life experience like, like, like you just did, Brian, I'm telling you, it will put you accolades above everybody else at least in my eyes what's what's your eyes or, or am, I, am i just throwing a sucker punch here or or or, or what what do you think i mean 
people have different levels of comf comfortability, right? Um, I've known you electronically now for about a year and a half, yep. right? Um, and I know that this is going to be watched by people, so on and so forth. My conversation is with you. So I'm comfortable speaking to you, right? Um, I, I'm not hiding, you know, the way that I grew up or any of those things. Um, I think that it's, uh, you know, I, I thank God every day I'm, I'm where I am. Um, in an interview, yes, it's okay to show some of that. In, in my, again, this is just my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's okay to tell those stories. It's okay to um, bring you to your interview. One of my notes on this slide here is bring your best self. Um, if you have something like that, then by all means, bring it. Um, I don't want, nor is the intention for it to get emotional, right? Um, I don't, if, if your dad just passed away and building that tree house was the most precious thing to you, by all means, please don't use that as an example because um, that's just really, in my opinion, that's really kind of an uncomfortable situation for everybody. Um, now I got to find tissue. Now I've got to be consoling. Now um, I've got to be empathetic. I've got to, it, it, why are we here? You know? Yeah. Um, so bring yourself if you can maintain composure and, and be real, but bring your best self. Yeah, I, that's the number one thing. But to bring your best self, you need to know who you are. That's right. Right. And that comes from that comes from from practice. So in the notes here, have your stories lined up. And I don't mean stories as in stories in li as, as in lies that, that you think happened. Have your stories lined up that in different, if in different scenarios, that they may be a good idea to share if, if it's the right situation. It's not like reading a book and then taking notes and then sitting there in an interview or, or, or a sales process and reading through like, okay, what's your current payment? When is, when is your lease term? You know, like that, that type of stuff. When is it, when is a contract up? You know, like have, know your, know your stories so well and have practiced them. And this is what I want to talk about real quick too, Brian is, is, is the practice portion. Like you grab a, you, you grab somebody and just practice, go through, go through mock, mock interviews, time and time and time again the, the more leadership stuff i i i learn and and the more leadership stuff that i watch i see that there's common traits and you you know all these common traits already but i'll just i'll just mention one is is just the consistency you know the consistency with preparation and we talk about the blue angels here with 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 you in, in the Navy, we, we talked about this in the beginning, the, the visualization before you must visualize. And I'm not saying you, Brian, I'm talking to myself here because I'm, I'm looking at myself, but you know, I like, before I do anything, I, I visualize it. Like not just once, like it's, it's days and days and weeks and months and wait, now, if you're, if you're going for an interview, you may, you may not be able to do that for months. But if you know you have an interview 30 days from now or 45 days from now, I'd say spend at least 10 or 15 minutes just going through your head. Okay, I'm going to go in there. I'm going to do this. And actually, I can do a better job in terms of visualization with the meetings we do every, every Wednesday night. And I'm going to actually add that to my list because when we first start out, like I am, I'm talking higher. I'm, I'm excited. I'm like, da, 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 da. I'm stammering on some of my words because I'm so excited to, to like spray out everything. And that's okay. Right. Because I'm, because I'm high energy and because I want to bring my very best, but in an interview with practice, and this is one of the reasons why I love doing this is because with it, with practice, you settle down, you, you, you can see yourself. And looking in the mirror is one thing that I do all the time. I just look in the mirror and smile. I mean, I look in the mirror and smile and, and I'm like, okay, yes, yes, thank you. Sometimes I'll clap or something else like that. It's those little things. You have to be your biggest fan in terms of wanting to succeed because nobody can want it more than you. 
So um, what about the same answers? You, using the same answers, kind of these, you, you, do most interviewers ask the same questions all the time? Do most, do most businesses or are they all in the same kind of like topics or from, from, from what you know? I think they're all in the same generalized categories. Um, the reason that you have 10 or 12 stories um, and, and, and polished is because if, if they're good stories and they're well thought out, um, number one, if they're true, like, I mean, if you're lying to me, yeah. um, uh, sometimes I'll be able to pick up on that. Um, you're telling these same stories over and over and over again, however many interviews you have and you collect them through the years. So they're tools in your tool bag, right? You need to know them, you need to know them cold, and you need to know them in the star format. Because this goes back up to the be confident. If you have to think about your answers on the fly, which is I know sometimes people will ask questions that you can't have a canned answer for. I'm not asking for a canned answer. I'm asking for an honest answer that you've practiced that you can deliver. It's your elevator pitch. It's your whatever you want to call it, right? Um, and if you have 10 or 12 of them in your toolbox, then it doesn't matter what they ask you. You go through your registration and say, you go through your mental Rolodex and say, I could answer this, this way, this way, this way. I think this one answers the question best. So then you use that one and you tell that story and then you throw it away because you've already used it. And when they ask that next question, okay, I can use this one or this one. I'm going to go with this one because I think it answers the question. It has the result that they're looking for. It has the situation that they're looking for. Um, I think that's important. I think that of your stories, you need to keep building on them. You, you have to have a story from the previous six months. Um, and, and I know that one of those is result. If you are currently working on a project that would perfectly answer that question and you don't have a result yet, go ahead and use it because it's current, it's fresh. You're going to bring them right up to a point to the result. And then you answer that with, we are within six months of finishing this project. The anticipated result is 15% savings on transportation and shipping costs and a 5% increase in availability of this particular system. Um, that's okay, because you've answered everything. This, and it, it's relevant, it's relevant, it's fresh. Um, you have an expected result. It's okay to use that. Yeah, I think the best way for me to get all of that information, which you said, is by working with professional. I'm not, I'm not going to give you, I'll give, I'll give you a shameless plug here, but what, working with someone like Brian, you know, when all this is all set up, you know, to go over the star stuff. And I'm, I'm a firm believer in writing. Like I, I write all the time. I try to spend 15, well, I, I, I say I write all the time. I try to spend 15 to 30 minutes a day writing, right? And what that does is it imprints what I'm thinking in my head and it, and it makes it stronger. And it, and it gives me the ability to go back and reread that. But what I'm not doing is using the STAR method to do that. Now, I'm not inter interviewing for jobs or anything else like that. But anybody that's listening, you know, work with a professional. We had Austin on here earlier. He, he, do, he, he does the coaching stuff. Brian can help you out on, on the resume writing. He can help you out on the, on the star method. Like use the people around you that are going to bring the best out in you, you know? And no matter how good a leader thinks they are and no matter how good a professional athlete or, 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 or a fighter pilot thinks they are, there's always that one little bit that they can get better in. And they're always working with new coaches, professional development people, you know, everybody is, I, I want to tweak, I want to tweak the nutrition. I want to tweak the workout. I want to tweak the massage. I want to use some type of new, new anything. It's the same thing. Like if you, if you're not 
if you're not showing up for yourself and you're not committing yourself to do the best, the very best you can, then you're just selling yourself short. I mean, because people's expectations are way up here. Where's the camera here? The expectations are way up here. And if you're serving down here, it's not going to go over well, man. So you got to, you got to, you got to raise the level in everything that you do. So there's only a few more things, Brian. You want to go through them? You, you just want to go, go through them in the next oh, couple of minutes? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so, listen, there's a lot of jargon out there, okay? There's a, there's a lot of lingo used, stuff like that. So I'd like to get your thoughts. Is it okay to use lingo, in, like industry lingo? So you're coming from the same market segment, same business segment. You come in, is it okay to start saying mill instead of millions? Is it okay to start saying, you know, what, what, whatever the lingo is, the cursing, you know, I know di different construction may allow a little bit more cursing. Do you do any of the lingo? Do you do any of the cursing? What's your thoughts on that? Or do you just run a straight line? So I tend to run a straight line until you get to know me and then I'm a sailor. So my, my language flies. <laughs> I've cussed on here um, a couple of times in past shows. Um, it's okay to use industry lingo if it is common industry lingo. If, okay. um, like I said, I am in aerospace. Um, so if I currently work for Boeing and we call um, a, a wing a potato chip, right? And then I go to Lockheed Martin and they call a wing a wing. And I go to interview for Lockheed Martin and I say, I, I was working on this potato chip and it was blah, blah, blah. They're going to look at me like I have lost my freaking mind. So there could be, I'll call it proprietary lingo within a company. Um, the military is huge. We have uh, every, every military, every, everybody has their own language, their own words, their own. Um, in the, in the Navy, it's not left and right. It's port and starboard. It's not, uh, it's not a ceiling, it's an overhead. It's not a um, floor, it's a deck. It's not a wall, it's a bulkhead. So if I walk into uh, any construction site, if I walk into anywhere and start throwing around those terms, people are just going to look at me with that deer in the headlight look like I have no idea what you're talking about. So uh, when you get out of the military, you leave a certain industry, a certain job or whatever, just be cognizant of what is lingo what is industry standard um, and try to lead. I, my company, there's a bazillion acronyms. Um, AARP has 15 different meanings. You know, it could be just about anything. So um, make sure that you leave the lingo, the acronyms, all of those things at home where they belong and speak as straightforward and professional as you can. Um, if I walk in and uh, my interviewer is, is cussing um, again during my interview probably going to refrain as best I can um, I just think it's a level of professionalism and I don't care what the industry is I don't care where, I mean unless it's the mafia right if you got to go interview for the mafia you got to speak the lingo in the mafia um, but anything outside of that I'm going to say just leave all that stuff at home until you get the job so if someone was in the Navy and you're interview or, or the Air Force or the Army or, or something else, Boy Scout, whatever, whatever it is, any association, right? Do you, do you drop the lingo to kind of, because you're trying to associate as fast as possible. So do you maybe throw in some of the lingo and see how their facial expression, like, hey, you know, what's so going on? we go on? around the room. We go around the room and we tell everybody where we're from. Never yet. Have I been in a room with three sailors or three Air Force guys or whatever, right? There's usually a mix. Um, I try to bring in people that have never been in the military. So I'll have three interviewers, right? Um, I like to, I mean, I've got a military and or military slash Navy. I've got that one covered, right? If I have somebody, I, I want an industry person there who's never been in the military, Um and I want somebody else in there who has uh, a resident expert. So my last round of stuff, I hired an IT person. I am not an IT person. Um, so I had the, the, the person who will be supervising that position because they can speak to the position. 
Um, and when they're answering questions that relate to the position, that individual will be able to pick up on certain things. Um, I also brought in somebody from another team who is an bona fide IT person. I asked her to help me write the, the requisition, the job order, so I can get that out there so we can get in the right flavor of people. So when they're talking the technical IT database, 10 pound brain stuff, um, mm -hmm. I looked at her and relied on her to ask those questions and um, receive that, that feedback from the interviewer. So the panel is very well-rounded. Um, and, and so it, if I'm interviewing somebody from the military, I can speak to some of that. Um, if I'm interviewing from somebody from private sector, somebody else on the team can speak to that. Wow. Whew. Well, dude, we went over a lot tonight, man. We went, we went over a lot. I think we covered all the topics and we, and we highlighted some, some of the topics too, and went, went off on some, some different areas as well. But, um, I think it's probably a good spot to, to kind of close for, for tonight. Um, but yeah, there's, there's so much. I'll, I'll just share my two thoughts, man, is, you know, and this doesn't all have to do with just this, what the topics that we went over tonight, but it all correlates together. And that is make a commitment to be the best you can be. I mean, that's, that's really like make a commitment to raise your game, make a commitment to stretch yourself to get out of the comfort zone, man. It is so easy just to walk through and go into an interview and just slack through it and walk through it and think that you have the job because someone gave you a, a, a warm handoff or something, you know, like, Oh yeah, oh, I know Brian. Yeah. You can, you can interview with them, but I'll tell you what, when you get in front of a good, of, of a strong interviewer in, in a, in a person that that's of high value, um, that knows their stuff. If you're not prepared, I don't know how else to say it, but you're going to get smoked. I mean, that's the, that's, that is the bottom line. You know, if, 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 if I'm a cornerback and I'm going up against one of the fastest guys, like, um, you know, I got to be prepared to, for a battle, you know, as soon as he comes off the line, you gotta, you gotta smack him back a little bit. So just, just be prepared. And, and like I always say, the time to prepare is before you need it. I didn't make up that quote. That's, that's somebody else's quote. But I always use that, man. The time to prepare is before you need it. Work with a professional. Get, get your resume done properly. Work with an interview specialist. Get that done properly. If you need some mindset help, work with somebody that's going to get you in the right mindset. Get your stories down. And um, Brian, what are your closing thoughts? So I pretty much have two closing thoughts here. Um, number one is in the research. Uh, if you're going to do research on the company, um, put your thought into it and make sure you know what you're talking about because the people you're talking to absolutely know what you're talking about if you're talking about their company. Um, an example, we had two different people bring up their company research when I asked them, just tell me a little bit about yourself and why do you think you'd be a good fit for our company? Um, one person uh, did the research and said, um, I like your core values, which are do what's right, respect others and perform with excellence. Um, I really, the, the resonates with me. I really like that. I appreciate it. I try to live that through my college uh, development years, so on and so forth. But they, they mentioned our core values. Um, they, they mentioned that they understand them. It matches their own. I thought that was a good reference point. Um, the second person said, uh, that they were interested in this initiative that is coming down the road um, and used it totally out of context, has no idea what that, um, what that initiative was, read an article in the Washington Post, as far as I can tell, because it was government related um, and was so far out in left field um, on that comment, they wanted to sound smart like they had researched the company Sounds to me like they read a couple of headlines and that was it. And trust me, when that interview was over, all three of us on that panel talked about it. Um, mm. And then the second thing is the interviewers want you to do well. Nobody is in there saying, man, I really hope this guy sucks. Every single person in there is 
your friend. My boss, when he does interviews, he is stone face. He is very stoic, no facial expressions, no nothing. People say, he makes me so nervous, I cannot think straight when he's looking at me, right? Mm -hmm. He does that for everybody, so that's just him. He wants you to do well in that interview. Nobody wants you to fail. Wow. Those are power, powerful words from a wizard. <laughs> so let's let's end on that. So let's end on that, man. Um, listen, every Wednesday night we had a we had a rocking crew tonight. We had, we had a good time. We're gonna we're gonna start to bring on a few more people and stuff like that for for short terms, just to get some feedback, give you some different angles. We'll get some different questions going. It's every Wednesday night, eight o'clock Eastern, seven o'clock Central. I'm not gonna try the West Coast thing. I've, I've screwed that up way way too much, but. Um, it's Brandon. It's Brian, man. Listen, if there's anything that comes up during the week, um, just shoot either myself or send either myself or Brian the questions. If there's anything you want us to review, go over, you want to come on with us live, come on. That's, that's what it's all about, right? You're going to get the training. We're going we're gonna to push you to and give you the opportunity, but you need, to, you, need to, you need to take hold of it and understand that, hey, you know, it's, it's not going to be comfortable sitting behind a camera. It's not going to be comfortable talking into a microphone. It's not going to be t comfortable looking at somebody on a screen. But with the way the world is, that's the way that it is. So you may as well take advantage of the opportunity and practice with as many different people as you can, with as many different leaders as you can, as much as you possibly can. So um, that's all I have. And uh, we'll catch up with you next week. Thank you so much.